In this video, we're going to take a look at how to find the derivative of logarithmic functions and also how to do something called logarithmic differentiation. It's a special technique for dealing with certain kinds of complicated functions. First of all, what is, how do we get the derivative of a logarithmic function? Okay, the trick here, here's a rule, which in the end we're probably just going to end up memorizing. It says the derivative of log base a of x is 1 over x times the natural log of a. Where does that rule come from? Well, if we say y is equal to log base a of x, then that's the same as saying a to the y equals x. All right, and now we're going to use uh, implicit differentiation to find the derivative of this guy. All right, so the derivative of an exponential we saw in the past was we're going to take the derivative of both sides here. Derivative of an exponential function is that exponential function times the natural log of the base. In this case, we have an inside function of y here, so we have, have to string along a dy dx, and that's equal to 1. So we can solve for dy dx here. dy dx equals 1 over a to the y natural log of a. But remember we started here. We said a to the y was the same as x. So dy dx is equal 1 over x times the natural log of a. This rule is uh, a little strange because it seems like this natural log of a comes out of nowhere. Right. But it is just part of the rule, and it's a little adjustment we have to make here when we're working in bases besides the natural base. What happens when we're working in the natural base? Well, when we're working in the natural base, we have a is equal to e. So we have the derivative of log base e of x. That's not the way we usually write it. It's 1 over x times the natural log of e. Right. Natural log of e is just 1, so this is 1 over x. The way we normally write log base e of x is with different notation, ln, it stands for natural log of x. So here we have the rule for differentiating natural log, 1 over x. That's why the base e is special. It doesn't require any adjustment in calculus. Right. We don't have to have this extra term, natural log of a, that floats along. So these two rules are rules that you just pretty much have to memorize. We can understand where they come from, but there's no getting around just memorizing them. So the derivative of log base 3 of x would be 1 over x times the natural log of 3. And on the next page, we'll look at some more complicated examples. All right. We can combine the derivative of logarithms with the chain rule. Okay. This says the natural log of the sine of x squared. I don't like that for calculus, this sine squared of x notation, putting the 2 right here next to the trig function name, gets confusing. When we write it like this, it's easier. All right. So we saw on the last page that the derivative of the natural log of something was 1 over that something. Okay. Well, here we're going to have to use the chain rule. We have the derivative of natural log of some stuff. So f prime of x is equal to the derivative of natural log of some stuff is 1 over that stuff times the derivative of the inside. Okay. How do I differentiate this? Well, that's another chain rule. So I get here 2, leave the inside alone, to the first power times the derivative of the inside. 
So here I've got sine of x squared, here I have sine x to the 1, so we can of course cancel that, and we get 2 cosine x over sine x, or we can rewrite that as 2 cotangent of x. Okay. With logarithms, there are several properties of logarithms that we're going to use throughout here. Right. One is that the natural log of something a to the r, or log of any base really, is r times the natural log of a. So I can bring the exponent here to the front. We also know the log base a of m times n is the log base a of m plus the log base a of n. And there's a similar property for quotients. The log base A of a quotient, m over n, is the difference of the logarithms on the right-hand side here. What does that have to do with this problem? Well, let's go back and look at this one more time. In this problem, we've got f of x is equal to the natural log of the sine of x squared. Right. If we took advantage of this property, it says we can bring the exponent to the front, we can rewrite this before we ever differentiate as 2 times the natural log of the sine of x. Now it's easier to differentiate. I've got the constant times a function. I just take the constant out of my way. Now I'm going to differentiate the function. The derivative of natural log of some stuff is 1 over that stuff times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. Again, we get 2 cotangent x. The answer is the same, but it required less differentiation. I didn't have to do the chain rule twice here, so perhaps it's less confusing. Okay, Here I, we can write down the, the chain rule for logarithms. Just to summarize, the derivative log base a of some stuff, we'll call that stuff u, is 1 over u times the natural log of a times the derivative of the inside du dx. Or if we just have the natural log of u, the derivative of natural log of some stuff is 1 over that stuff times the derivative of the stuff. A nice way to write that is to recognize that another notation for du dx is u prime, so this is u prime times 1 over u, or u prime over u. Some people like to, to think of it in this last form. All right, here's another let's, uh, chain rule example. Again, there's a, two or three different ways to go about doing this one. All right, we'll start with just the, the straightforward chain rule first. The derivative of log base A of some stuff is 1 over that stuff times the natural log of the base times the derivative of the inside. And I can, of course, use the product rule to get that derivative. And if we clean this up, I can factor the e to the x out of both terms there, so I have e to the x times x plus 1. And these e to the x's cancel. Okay, now there might have been an easier way to get there. If I first use the properties of logarithms, I've got my function, log base 5 of x e to the x. I can rewrite that as, because this is the log of a product, it's going to be the sum of the logarithms. And then I could apply the differentiation rule to each piece here. So f prime of x equals 1 over x times the natural log of 5. 
So what we get from differentiating this term, plus 1 over e to the x times the natural log of 5 times the derivative of the inside, e to the x. Of course, the e to the x terms cancel here, and I'm left with 1 over x times the natural log of 5 plus 1 over the natural log of 5. And getting a common denominator, I can get to exactly where I was before. Right, there's the second method. The third method involves a trick that we haven't discussed yet, and that is the change of base formula. This actually is my favorite way to do these. If I have to work it with a logarithm and a base other than the natural log, the first thing I do to it is to change the base. And the change of base formula says the log base A of anything you like here, so of B, is the natural log of b divided by the natural log of a. How does that work here? All right, so our third method. So again, we'll start with our function. All right, and right away, so I've got the log base 5 of some number b, right, is going to be the natural log of that number b divided by the natural log of the base. Well, this natural log of the base stuff, that's just a constant. This is a number I'm going to write out front as 1 over the natural log of 5 right, times the natural log of x e to the x. From here on out, this constant is just along for the ride. Now I'm going to use properties of logs to split this up. Natural log of a product is the sum of the natural logs. Right. Natural log of e to the x, those cancel each other, and I'm left with, so far I haven't even taken a derivative. We're just manipulating this expression. So finally, the derivative, 1 over natural log 5 is along for the ride. Derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Derivative of x is 1. Get a common denominator here, and you get 1 over natural log of 5 times x plus 1 over x, which is the same answer we had above. Sometimes you, it really, really pays to use properties of logs before you start taking derivatives. All right. If I were to take and differentiate this expression, I've got natural log of some stuff. All right. So one, the derivative would be 1 over that stuff times the derivative of this stuff. And that's just plain nasty. All right. But if I use properties of logs first, I can bring the one half to the front. Notice here also that the numerator factors is the difference of squares. The log of a product is the sum of the logs. The log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. So it may take a couple steps. We can rewrite this as The last term here becomes a negative because it's in the denominator. So when I take the log of a quotient, I get the difference of the logs. And now this is much simpler to differentiate. So to find h prime of z, one half I leave alone. Derivative of natural log of some stuff is 1 over that stuff times the derivative of this stuff. The derivative of this with respect to z is minus 1. Plus 1 over the stuff times the derivative of this stuff. Plus 1. Minus 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside with respect to z is 2z. 
And that's the derivative. We may still have to go and get a common denominator or something, depending on how we want to use this, but that's pretty much done. And it's a heck of a lot simpler than if we had jumped in and just started differentiating using the chain rule and the quotient rule here at the beginning. Now one variation on the derivatives of log functions that we're going to see quite frequently, particularly as we move ahead into later chapters, is the natural log of the absolute value of x. Right. Recall that absolute value of x means just x if x is greater than 0 and minus x if we have a, a negative number. And you can put the equals on either of these, it doesn't matter. Right. So here the natural log of the absolute value of x that's the same thing as saying natural log x if x is greater than or equal to 0, except I'm going to avoid equal 0 because I can't take the natural log of 0. And it's the natural log of minus x if x is less than 0. So to find the derivative, we can differentiate piecewise. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, and that works when x is greater than 0. And then if we want to differentiate natural log of minus x, we have to use the chain rule. So we get 1 over minus x times the derivative of the inside, which is minus 1. That's when x is less than 0. Of course, this last one simplifies, so we get 1 over x if x is greater than 0, or 1 over x if x is less than 0. So in summary, we just get 1 over x. What's the point of that? Well, the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x is equal to 1 over x. This formula works for not only positive x, but also for negative x. And later on, we're going to want to go backwards from a function to find what it was the derivative of, we call that an antiderivative, right? And this natural log of absolute vac natural log of absolute x is essential there. Okay. So for now, that's just kind of a trivia thing. All right, <clears throat> there were several examples of differentiating with uh, logarithms, and now we're going to look at logarithmic di differentiation. It's a technique for w working with complex functions that involve products, quotients, powers. All right, and we can often make these derivatives simpler by taking using a logarithm first. Okay. So first we're going to take the log of both sides, and it's convenient to work with the natural log. And we'll see what I mean in the context of an example here in a moment. Then we're going to differentiate that expression implicitly, as we learned to do in the last section. Then we can solve for the der derivative we're interested in, y prime. And finally, our answer may involve y's at the end, but we can use our original formula to convert it to something involving all x's. All right. Here's an example. All right. Using here the quotient rule would be a mess. All right. I have the high d low d high minus high d low. When I go to do d high, I've got to use a quotient rule and also some chain rules etc. So we're going to try this idea of logarithmic differentiation. Step one, we take the log of both sides. Now we're going to use properties of logarithms, and the properties of logarithms say that the log of a quotient is the difference of the logs now the log of a product is the sum of the logs Now we can use our rule for exponents. The exponents can come to the front.
And finally, there isn't much else I can do with that, except here the natural log of e is the same as the number 1. Now we're going to differentiate both sides implicitly. So the derivative of natural log of some stuff is 1 over that stuff times the derivative of the stuff. So 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside, so dy dx in this case. The derivative of minus x is minus 1. So we're doing step 2 here. We're doing the implicit differentiation. This 2 here gets pulled out of the way. The derivative of natural log of the inside is 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside minus the derivative of natural log of some stuff, 1 over the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. Okay. So step 3 here says I can solve for dy dx. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y. Okay. And I put the brackets here. We're going to clean up the stuff in uh, here. So we have minus 1. Let's see, sine x over cosine x is tangent x. So we have minus 2 tangent of x. There's the negative 2. And then here we get minus 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. So here was the, the step 1, step 2, step 3. Right. And finally, since my original function involved only x's, I ought to be able to write the derivative in terms of only x. Right. But my derivative right now has a y in it. But remember, from the beginning, right, here is y. And so I can substitute that into my final answer. Now, algebraically, this derivative is a mess, but it's going to be a mess in any case, even if we did the differentiation by some other technique, because we started with a pretty complex function. But there's the answer. I think it would have been much harder to get to that answer if we used things like the quotient rule and the product rule and chain rules and so on, although that would have been possible. Here's an example where it would be impossible to do this without logarithmic differentiation. Right. I don't have a rule here for differentiating this guy. Right. y equals x to the cosine of x. Notice this isn't an exponential function. An exponential function, the base would be constant. Or a power function, where the exponent would be constant. Right. This is has the variable in both the base and the exponent. And so we don't have a rule to deal with that. A simpler example of this would be y equals x to the x. So what do I do? Well, we're going to apply the logarithmic differentiation step. Step one, take the natural log of both sides. And now clean up. Differentiate implicitly. The derivative of natural log of y is 1 over y times the derivative of the inside, dy dx. On the right side here, I have to use the product rule. Leave the first alone times the derivative of the second, plus take the derivative of the first, leave the second alone. Solve for dy dx, or y prime. And finally, in the last step, we're going to put back all our x's. And that's pretty much the only way to get that derivative, unless you know a different trick, but it would amount to the same thing. All right.